Hello everybody, Maven here. Today we'll be reviewing the brand new Path of Least Resistance Tracer Rifle and the reason why I believe it is the best Volt Shot weapon in the entire game and one of the best Arc Adclair weapons in general in the entire game. And I feel like this thing came out of the oven very underappreciated at the start of the season. Nobody really talked about this thing. Everyone just overlooked it at least from what I've heard. And this thing also has a hidden perk to it that makes it very strong against beefier enemies. And I'll show you more about that later in the video. So in this video, we'll be going over a build with it as well to make the most out of it. So with that, let's get to it. Don't forget to like and sub and let's break it down. Hope you enjoy. So before we talk about the Trace Rifle, there are a couple things that I have to mention to preface this thing. The first thing is going to be the exotic armor piece we're using with this build. It is the Fallen Sunstar, so your Ionic Traces generate additional ability energy and also grant ability energy to your teammates as well. And then the next thing I have to mention is pretty much the build around of this entire thing, which is the aspect called Electrostatic Mind. It says that defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets generates an ionic trace and collecting an ionic trace makes you amplified. So safe to say that we're going to be amplified pretty much 100% of the time with this build. And since it says defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace, then it's pretty safe to say the arc warlock really appreciates having a weapon that has volt shot. So what is the best Volt Shot weapon? So here are the best weapons that can jolt things. Path of Least Resistance, Tarnished Metal, Ikelos SMG, Brigand's Law, and Delicate Tomb. Now Delicate Tomb has always been the classic thing to pair with the Fallen Sunstar. It's great, hits like a truck, albeit not as ammo efficient unless you're pairing it with a heavy handed setup. And next is the Tarnished Metal, you know, in end game content like Grandmasters, when you need to use a champion mod on your scout rifle, the Tarnished Metal does the job. It has synergy with your subclass with that Volt Shot, but in lower end content, you're not really gonna use a 200 RPM Scout Rifle, such as like the Night Watch being a 200 RPM Scout Rifle. Whoever uses that in low end content, it just does not hit as hard as you would want it to. And next is the Ikelos SMG. Now it is a good weapon. It really is a good weapon. But the main thing about Seven Seraph and Ikelos weapons are that they can create war mine cells. But remember, Bungie announced that with the release of Lightfall, they are removing war mine cells from the game. So what's really the point anymore? But it's still a good SMG. It just has some range fall off. You know, it's not going to do well at long range. You can still hit your shots, but it's just going to be a pea shooter from that range. You know, up to 30 meters, it feels great, but then beyond that, it kind of suffers. And then we get to the Brigand's Law. Now, this one is very, very strong from close range. Very good aping sidearm for Volt Shot builds, and it's going to do you wonders in lower end content if you're playing some Gambit, playing some Strikes, doing whatever like that. The Brigand's Law is a great choice. However, it has even lesser range than the Ikelos SMG. Definitely is tough to hit your shots from mid-range. And then we come to the Path of Least Resistance. Now this thing being a special weapon, it hits harder than all of our primary options we just talked about, but this thing is good from close to long range. It covers all areas, things an absolute beam. You can easily hit your shots from super far range, and this thing hits so hard. So here is the setup I have on my crafted Path of Least Resistance. Got small bore, tactical battery with the reload masterwork, got triple tap and volt shot, of course, got a minor spec on there for ad clear. Now you might be thinking, volt shot weapons, don't they need a reload perk? This one's got rapid hit, this one has feeding frenzy, this one has perpetual motion. What is going on with this Path of Least Resistance? Well, the Path of Least Resistance does have access to one of the best origin traits in the entire game, Amelon Fluid Dynamics. On the top half of the magazine, you get granted plus 20 stability, so it's sitting at 100 stability, things an absolute beam, but also gives plus 35 reload speed. So it doesn't actually have this 60, it's really at 95. So you put on one trace rifle loader on your gloves and boom, that is perfect 100 reload speed. Now, I did mention earlier in the video that Path of Least Resistance has a hidden perk, but where is it? You see the entire gun here, where is the hidden perk? Well, let me tell you. So Volt Shot actually has a little hidden thing with it, where if you jolt a fatter enemy, they will stagger. I'll show a clip right here, which I forgot to record audio in, by the way, sorry about that. But the Tarnished Metal with Volt Shot, I'm shooting Carl, and you can see a little stagger animation play out. Once I deal enough damage to him to proc a Jolt Explosion, he will stumble. 
Now, the thing about these primary weapons of Volshot is they're not going to do enough rapid DPS. They're not going to do enough damage to continuously proc those Jolt explosions as the pre-nerf Volatile explosions did. Jolt isn't nerfed, however, and the Path of Least Resistance with Volshot can take full advantage of this. So when we proc that Volshot and we go in at Carl, he is stunlocked. He can do nothing back to us. He is staggering and staggering and staggering because this is how pre-nerf volatile rounds worked. It was proccing more than intended, and with the Path of Least Resistance with Volshot jolting, we are proccing those jolt explosions quicker than intended. And so he is stunlocked, he can do nothing back to us, and that gives your teammates all the leeway to do all the damage to the majors they want to because they can't do anything back. So this is the hidden perk of the Path of Least Resistance. So any enemy type in the game that has a stagger animation can be stun locked by the path of least resistance. And now I'm sure there are heavy machine guns such as the Terminus Horizon, for example, that can probably do the same thing, but that's a heavy, you know, not as ammo efficient, reloads a lot slower to proc that bull shot. Path of least resistance does it a lot more effortlessly. So if you're wondering why I have triple tap, it allows you to stun lock those enemies longer. Plus it's just free ammo, so why the heck not? We don't really need stats for all because we already got pretty much maxed out reload speed anyways. And if that wasn't enough for the path of least resistance to win you over, then maybe this will be the icing on the cake that you need. Spark of Beacons. While you are amplified, which is pretty much 100% of the time with this build, your arc special weapon final blows will create a blinding explosion. Doesn't work for those primary Volshot options. So a blinding explosion. So whatever that Volshot jolts, if that jolted target doesn't die, at least they'll get blinded. And remember the subtext of Electrostatic Mine defeating a jolted or blinded target creates an ionic trace so they will be both jolted and blinded meaning that when you kill them you're going to create two ionic traces ionic traces that are powered up by the fallen sun star so they're more effective all right so with all that being said this is why i believe path of least resistance is the best bull shot weapon in the game so as for the other weapon choices, my heavier choice is going to be the Anarchy. And as you know, heavy GLs are getting buffed in Lightfall and the Anarchy is going to be the meta. And Bungie even hinted at Anarchy being the meta. This thing's going to be a powerhouse, so I would get it if I were you. But if you don't want to use that, there is the Hothead and that is a good option as well. And there's also the Half Truth Sword. I don't have it on me. This is the other half, but if you like Eager Edge, it's a good option. For your primary, you can use whatever you want. I would recommend something with Demolitionist for grenade spam. Um, however, if you were using something like a hothead or, you know, a sword, that would allow you another exotic slot, and I would use the Traveler's Chosen in that case, because it has Osmosis, is the ability regen as well, and turns it into an arc weapon, and we are taking advantage of Phantom Might with this build, so we want arc weapons all the way through. So with all that out of the way, let's go over the rest of the build. So for my aspects and fragments, the other aspect is going to be Arc Soul because Arc Soul's got a buff recently and they're hitting really dang hard. And it says that while you are amplified, your Arc Souls become supercharged and have an increased fire rate. So they become sentient Arc Souls. And remember, we're amplified pretty much 100% of the time. So your Arc Souls are just nutty. They hit really good. And my grenade of choice is going to be the Storm Grenade. Has a quicker cooldown, but also hits really hard. My melee of choice is Chain Lightning, got Healing Rift. For the rest of our fragments, we got Spark of Amplitude. So rapidly defeating targets while you are amplified creates an orb of power. And yes, this does indeed stack with Harmonic Siphon on your helmet. So if you get a double kill with your Trace Rifle, you're gonna make two orbs of power. So you can generate a lot of team support that way, not only an ability energy from your Fallen Sun Star, but also super energy from all of the orbs you're gonna be creating. However, with this build, I am not running Harmonic Siphon. I'm only running the Spark of Amplitude. And for the next fragment, we got Spark of Shock, a no-brainer. Arc Grenades Jolt Targets. That's just a given. You're going to run that whenever you're running R3.0. And then finally, we got Spark of Ions. Defeating a Jolted Target creates an Ionic Trace. So again, we're going to be making double the amount of Ionic Traces because every enemy we hit is going to be Jolted. So this is very strong. Now, as for our mod setup, I'm just gonna try a new layout and display them all at the top of the screen now and go over them one by one. So we got two copies of Tracer Rifle Ammo Finder. Yes, I am doubling up. Normally, I really don't like Ammo Finder mods because Finder Bricks 
give you a lot less ammo than real bricks, but for some reason it's a lot more effective for tracer rifles, so it's actually worth it here. And then we have two copies of tracer rifle reserves because each one is giving you like plus 48 ammo. It's pretty significant and I think it's definitely worth having. And then of course we have the tracer rifle scavenger because we're getting all these extra bricks. And then we have a copy of Bomber on our class item to help our grenade spam. And then we got a copy of Innervation on our boots because with Spark of Amplitude generating a bunch of orbs, Picking up those orbs grants us additional grenade energy. And now for our combat style mods, aka all these elemental well mods you see, Bungie did announce that they are taking away elemental wells in Lightfall. But really, I'm telling you this, all these mods in the combat style slot really aren't too significant to this build. They really don't matter too much, so you can run whatever mods you want to run, but this is just what I prefer using at the moment. So you could go with the Bountiful Wells Elemental Ordinance setup, and I tried that, but you're generating so much dang ability energy with these ionic traces constantly spawning in groups of two or even three. So I feel like you don't really need bountiful wells here. I think that the traces are enough for ability spam. So instead I'm running a font of might setup. We got three copies of font of might with the copy of elemental time dilation. And we got that elemental ordinance to help spawn the well we need to pick up to proc that. So elemental time dilation is going to increase the duration of well type effects for each additional copy of the mod. So with three copies, that makes it so that when we pick up that well, our arc weapons are going to get a plus 25% damage buff for 20 seconds. It's a pretty significant amount of time. And it really helps push that damage of your path of least resistance and your anarchy. And since we don't have any resist mods on our chest, I feel like it is very important to have 100 resilience here to be a little bit more tanky. And then I would aim for 100 discipline and then get as close to 100 with your recovery as you can. However, I don't really feel you need too much ability investment in general because those ionic traces are so effective at getting your abilities back. You don't really need too much investment, but really try to get 100 resilience if you can. So that is going to do it for the build. And as you saw during the background gameplay, it holds up very well in those solo legend lost sectors. I even use it in master content and you could even use it in grandmaster as well. It's good for any level of content. Those arc buddies really, really put in the work and you can give them to your teammates as well, as well as giving your team it's the ability regen from a fallen sun star very good team player build and this build is going to be even stronger in lightfall with all of our new mod mixing options because there's no more elemental affinity to them and also the fact that anarchy is going to get massively buffed this build is going to get even stronger so anyways if you have any questions about the build feel free to ask in the comments down below and i'll be happy to answer and if you have any suggestions for what could possibly make this build better let me know your thoughts and i'd like to try it out and as always, I'll leave the dim link to this build in the description and in the pinned comment if you'd like to give it a try. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment because that really helps out, helps the algorithm. And if you're new here, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Hope you have a nice rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.